Hello everyone, welcome back to my RP1 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video I hope to get some science from high Earth orbit in order to unlock something, anything really, uh, engines, uh, not SRBs. I really want hypersonic flights so that we can actually complete all the flight stuff. But mainly I think we're going for lunar range communication and that's because uh, of a sort of conceit. I understand that you can have a free re return trajectory and get the science once it gets closer to Earth, but traditionally it's really only a flyby unless you actually communicate with the probe in the SOI of your target. The only time when the free return thing was done for a probe was actually when the Soviets launched to the far side of the moon in order to take some pictures and then send that those images back. Of course from the far side of the moon it couldn't send those images directly so they had to come back in order to uh, transmit those. But generally speaking, they shot them out into interplanetary space or in any case, they were transmitting stuff while they were doing their thing in Lunar SOI. So yeah, I would like to do that. And that is admittedly not strictly necessary, but traditional. Clearly we have a degradation problem. Hopefully that was clear from the previous video that when we, when we launch we have degraded solar panels that are getting a small fraction of their actual power and that's not right. Uh, even if you take into consideration the build time, which you shouldn't because they're not exposed to light at that point, uh, it's still way too much. So something is wrong. and. For now, I'm not going to put solar panels, <laughs> basically, until we get some uh, information. Incidentally, for uh, bug testing purposes, let me say that I have updated uh, the mods. Uh, there is a certain lag of a few days to a week at most uh, between when I record the videos and when I uh, put them up on YouTube. So if the fix had occurred like in the past week, then maybe I didn't catch it. But uh, yeah, so just uh, mentioned, but here we have a probe that, and now I understand the communication thing sorta, kinda. Um, I don't understand what to do with the other antennae though. Uh, so we have other antennae here, but I, I can't figure out what we would be doing with that uh, yet. But so we've got these on uh, just so that we can get the power requirements. And now we have the early avionics, which has far lower power consumption than the avionics prototype. That was 25 watts is just 0.2. So that's critical for our future moon mission. This is not for the moon mission. This is just for higher Earth orbit science. And we have, see, it's always hiding. Okay. And uh, when we have full active transmission time, we have three days and nine hours. So that should be enough from a high earth orbit we don't we aren't going all the way out to the moon and we'll try and cut it to make sure that our orbital period is not longer than that because probably from our apoapsis we won't be able to transmit directly we'll need we will need to come closer to the earth in order to transmit for this but this isn't aiming for another soi or setting any records or anything like that so that is a situation i uh, i don't really want to bump up the transmit power there okay so I was testing out stuff, but we have 10,000 units of EC, and that is what we are, we are going to use. We've got the error B there. We're not even using all the error B because if we did, we'd get to the moon accidentally, or at least uh, that high in orbit, and we wouldn't have enough charge to then send the information back by coming back closer to the Earth. So we have made some other changes to the Atlas. It occurred to me belatedly and uh, the people uh, commented on how to do going, yes, you're right, I could do that. However, however, I have to say I like the shape of this one better. I don't like the little point. If you can tell me how to get rid of the stupid point there, that'd be great. I'd still like to tweak scale this nose cone. It's a nicer shape. Uh, that is a degenerate shape as far as I'm concerned. That's a technical thing where, anyway. Uh, so, yeah, this is not exactly the shape I wanted, but all right. Uh, I have made other changes. We are not using one LR-105 on the center now. We're using two because I don't know why I didn't think of it before, but we were under utilizing the tank because we had fitted a LR-89 or whatever early variant of the LR-89 we had. 
and so we were using the full tank for that but for the LR105 we didn't need to use all that because it has low thrust but of course we could properly utilize it by having two of them so now we have two of them the engines don't cost that much after all and we already sized the core appropriately for a much larger rocket speaking of which you'll note that I haven't painted this yet and that means it's not a final design and mainly we're waiting for a nicer stage here one that will have the same diameter and that is probably as somebody already mentioned uh, the Gamma 2 I'm sort of waiting for the Gamma 2 we do not have the Gamma 2 we have this Gamma 201 um, that is not what we want though we want the Gamma 2 but that's in the next technology of rocketry 1958 and we do not have that yet but with the Gamma 2 I would consider that and that's a nice sort of European engine to work with and I think that will sort of create the rocket that we're going for here maybe we'll see so anyway we are going to launch this probe with some science it's uh, got all the quickie science not the long-term science you know the thermometer barometer and uh, mass spectrometry and the TV camera those should be doable in the time that we're going to have in high Earth orbit and hopefully it'll give us a decent amount to work with so that we can unlock something. Let us see. Alright, here we are. Uh, we can launch in daylight because we're not relying on solar power for our probe at all. So we'll just go right now and try to head out to 35,000 kilometers, well 36,000 kilometers or wherever high Earth orbit happens to be and we'll see how that works out for us. So with that SAS on, throttle is up and ignition. Ah, oh, we've got a failure. We've got a failure. Shut down, shut down, shut down. That must be, yes, it's one of the LR-105s. All right, bring it back in. Somebody complained about the naming convention. Don't worry, uh, I've got, uh, once we get a uh, more finalized design, I have a uh, name in mind for the ultimate rocket. Well, not the ultimate rocket, the rocket that this is going to turn into. Okay, let's try this again. Throttle up and ignition. Well, we've got four of them. And launch. Well, up we go. Not a really high thrust to weight ratio anymore. I should probably not turn so quickly. While the top core is our latest technology in avionics, the one on the rocket and the second stage are not. Those two are not. Okay, booster set. Should I try to release the fairings here? I guess we'll try it. All right. We're already running those things. Looks like you can just set that in the VAB. But nothing useful in low Earth orbit. Okay, separation. And ignition. Now with this stage, well, we'll just barely get to orbit, so that's exactly right. So that's, uh, but we should pitch down a little bit. I mean, we, yeah, we could have waited a little bit on the ignition there. Let's try and restrain this a little bit. All right, well, a little bit low on the periapsis, but that's okay. Oh, well, we have to worry about comms in terms of stations, though I think we'll have something in Africa to pick us up. Well, we've got Ascension there. And Kano. Okay, maybe we should go before we develop any comm problems. Alright. 
spinning up and go. So based on what the communications planner said, we could probably transmit at about 8,000 kilometers. Okay, that's good enough. And up, oh, it wasn't responding to my throttle. All right. Well, actually, we didn't really cut it too far early or too far short. We are in that orbit. And that should not be so long that we lose power. Let's find out. Actually, even out here at 15,000, it seems to have some capability. Okay, now they're all running. Good times. And for the mass spectrometry, we need to be out here for two hours. We will definitely be out here for two hours. Oh, easy, yeah. I mean, our consumption is fairly low these days. They could do multiple orbits like this. I guess since we're not transmitting for most of that and the probe core doesn't take much anymore. Okay, we got all the things, I think. So now we have 22 science. Oh, this is tempting. There's so many things that I want. 22 science. What am I going to do with myself? Okay. So this was successful as far as being a science probe is concerned. Certainly better than anything with solar panels on it. Those long, long time ones suck. Anyway, uh, I mean, hopefully, maybe we can toss some of them out. I mean, look at it. It, it, uh, it only took 400 units of power on one pass. That was one day and 14 hours. So the like 90 day one. I mean, it wouldn't get done or anything, but we get a fair chunk of it. Even without any solar panels, just launching it like this. So that's a thought. But uh, it would also be working a whole lot during the low pass. I don't know. Hey, we've got a positive reputation again. That's nice. Right now we have no active contracts. And for the explain research, uh, we we've got the optional one, but I don't think uh, I don't think hmm, I don't think I want to push it. Maybe maybe we'll wait on that. We've done a lot of that sort of thing. Uh, mainly, we're looking for the high altitude one, but that altitude is just above the range of our X two cockpit, and so we need the X fifteen cockpit, which costs tw twelve science. We've got twenty six science now. It looks like up there. So, this high altitude optional is only 50 though. That we could do with just the X2. But it doesn't give us much reward. Maybe if we're desperate. For the early lunar probes, we could just send an impactor. Must have power, must be at least 40 kilograms, and then we can just toss it at the moon. Lunar range communication, primitive solar panels, orbital rocketry, where we have the Gamma 2 there, see? That will give us, I mean, it's not that much more thrust than the stage we have, but we really don't need that much more thrust than the Veronique. It's got about the same efficiency, but double the burn time. And it's the double the burn time part that we're looking for. But also hypersonic flight. Well, I have decided that the choice between the technologies is just way too hard. And so I'm going to try and get some more science. And we're going to do it by just launching this probe with these uh, micrometeorite detector, radiation detector, and magnetometer. And we'll see now if all of that is active. Waiting, waiting, waiting. And we take the rocket off. It says 0.5 per minute. It says 13 days, but then again, it once again, I wish this was just set to 100% here, the communication thing. Four days, nine hours, which seems really good, right? And of course, if we're not transmitting 13 days, um, and most of the time we're not going to be transmitting. So that will, that will get us some, but it's not going to be a whole lot because these take forever. 
but we'll be getting both the low Earth orbit and high Earth orbit. We still got 8.5 cosmic ray science in space to low. 5.8 for the magnetic scan. We have roughly the same delta V, so we're going to end up in the same place. And we'll get the LR-105 some more data. We're at 5,873 data units already, though. Maybe I'll pick one science while that's going on. We'll get the orbital rock rocketry. We'll get the orbital rocketry. Um, and then we'll wait. Uh, we've got 16. We could get the lunar range communication. And just one more unit will get us better solar panels. Or hypersonic flight is 12. But really, we could probably get the hypersonic flight just from the moon itself. Because uh, we have a lot of time on our hands until that deadline, 1992. So, yeah. That's seven years. Of course, now that I've said that, things will happen to make it not so long a time. But anyway, we'll see. Oh, we got some extra uh, low savanna visible, visible imaging. Oh, the mass spectrometry transmitted. We could get the lunar range communication and the uh, hypersonic flight. So we need like maybe seven for primitive solar panels. We're, we're doing pretty well. Okay, let's try. Let's try with these long duration ones. See how it goes. All right, SAS on, throttles up, and ignition, and launch. Okay, booster set. All right, fairing set. Okay, RCS is active and separation. All right, ignition. Looks about the same as last time, more or less. Uh, except our apoapsis is lower, so we'll probably be better off on that instead of having to point down this time. Uh, a bit lopsided. All right. Yeah, it would be nice to deorbit that stage, but we won't. <laughs> That's not the situation. Well, our ap apoapsis is a little bit further along, but I don't know. I don't think I should wait for communication purposes, so. Okay. Spin up and go. Okay, well we ended up at 84,000 this time. That suits me fine. Let's see what goes on. Okay, it is still running out here. We're just not transmitting. And then we transmit back when we slingshot around. I'm not gonna make too many passes with this amount of stuff. That was one day and we've used three times as much power as the other probe. Didn't get that much science. And on this last pass it won't be able to transmit that bit back anyway. Okay, it is done for. You only got really, I think, a fraction of one. Is that right? One science. Let's see, cosmic ray science. We got 1.3 cosmic ray science from space high, 0.3 all together. Oh, that's in flight though. Science points retrieved, we didn't retrieve those. Why didn't we retrieve those? I guess there wasn't enough time to transmit or 
Space high, we got 0.6 micrometeorite detection, but we've got 0.4 that was not transmitted. Magnetic scan, we have 2.4 on there that didn't transmit. Oh well, okay. It's a lot of little modules it's got on there. What is all that about, really? But, alright, we need Com Tech Level 1, I think. It's pretty clear that we don't have the right kind of Com Tech levels. And also we could unlock the Tracking Station Level 2 upgrade. And I could really use that because then we could get our orbital information proper. We haven't gotten all the... I think we might even be able to see our time to wap waps just like that. So, it would be nice. I think, aside from the lunar range communication with the Commutatron 16, I guess, and the COM level 1, just getting the tracking station upgrade would be nice. So, we've, we've got that research. And then it's just a choice between hypersonic flight and primitive solar panels, and I will put that off for a little bit. So we do have two program slots available here, and people have told me that targeted satellites is a trap, they keep saying. Um, though, I mean, uh, taking a look at it, it doesn't give me the funding that I'd like, and it asks for quite a lot of things. Uh, here, we have a little bit more funding with communication network, and it just wants some commsats, and it's got the commsat payload. Each sat satellite will require 125 units of commsat payload, alright, and the orbits are fairly high. Well, that's vague. So the question is, how fairly high are we talking about? Is it the right size where I can put these payloads on and use the little AirB or AJ-1027 to boost it up to the right orbit? Or uh, is it not? And how accurate do we need to be? Are we ready to do that yet or not? So even in normal, the deadline is 1989, three years. So that's pretty quick. We've uh, basically we're waiting on the technology. We're waiting for 1958 orbital to, uh, rocketry, and then we're gonna try and send something to the moon that we I guess can't communicate with, maybe, or we wait until lunar range communication. Maybe that'll give us enough time to do a comsat thing. Whoops. At least one launch. Definitely don't want to go fast on it. I think we'll try it. Not ComSat 1, not ComSat 2. Periapsis above 6,371 kilometers. The radius of the Earth. Alright. Eccentricity below 0 0.004 is rough with the AJ-1027. Well, I've picked it up now, so I guess we might as well. I needed something to do, what can I say? Okay, well, I think I've painted myself in a little bit of a corner here, because I now understand the testing time after network up two days uh, means that we're going to need the solar panels to recharge them, while we get the other ones ready, even if we build all three launchers ahead of time, it'll take some time to roll them out. And maybe we'll have enough battery charge for the duration, uh, or maybe not. It depends on whether they're failures. But I have cooked up a sort of um, ComSat payload here built into the avionics core. It's got 125 as required. And I decided to get the little ORM65, though upgrading it to its best variant because we want to make sure that it has good burn time, two ignitions, and also greater reliability. And so that's replacing our little AJ1027 because two ignitions is good for this purpose, and also uh, we didn't need that much thrust. So it'll be more accurate so that we don't have bad eccentricity, uh, but it's still a pressure fed engine. So, but it does have 3 minutes and 20 seconds burn time. On the other hand, it's only a 2, well, 3 kilonewton thruster. 
So lots going on there, but I decided that, that would be the best thing for this. Otherwise the rocket is the same, except I have decided to upgrade the avionics. And so we now have early avionics on both stages and I have two of those things. So the thing is the power situation. Now in here I baked in 6,000 electric charge and we don't have, I, I don't know, we've got a commsat payload. <laughs> we've got that. Uh, as far as the power requirements right now, it says uh, consumed 0.08 per second. So that's 80 watts. That's just the core. Uh, if we get comms, then it says 17 hours. But with 6,000 units of electric charge... Oh, there's a sensor. Well, no, that's still per hour, though. I mean, early avionics does take a lot, because it's not like the other cores. It's fully controllable here. We've got the RCS and all that business, so... Uh, we don't have enough electric charge for that. We're probably going to need to put solar panels, which means we need better solar panels, and especially ones that actually work the way they're supposed to. And... Maybe we'll have to wait on this whole ComSat business after all. I thought it was something that we could do quickly, but I don't think so. Why is it offering me a targeted satellite contract for first communication satellite? I mean, that looks nice now. I guess they offer that even if we haven't picked up the targeted satellite contract. We didn't. So, but I guess we can do that contract because of our comms communication network one. Well, in that case, maybe we can do this instead. Minimum inclination of 35 degrees. It doesn't have anything except for tests for stable orbit. It does have can generate solar power. We can add solar panels. We'll try it. Okay, we're currently upgrading the pad to deal with the propellants for this little engine here. And I've added a solar panel here that I hope will recharge us. Uh, if we take that off, we see that it says consumed 80 watts. Now, let me make sure our communication. I've set the communication to something more like what we need, which is a little bit less than the default. And that means that we're consuming 87 watts. And that's mainly because I've got the early avi the full avionics here, the near earth avionics here, and that's going to consume extra power compared to our other stuff. But still with 6000 here and with the solar panel it says 3 days, but I'm not sure why because the solar panel technically produces at least 95 watts. But we know it's not going to do that. But we'll see what it does. We see, we'll see what it does. The contract just says can produce solar power, can generate solar power. I don't know what it's going to require in specific on that. Uh, we need to get to 35 degree inclination and we uh, do have the 80 units. So instead of the 125 that the other contracts needed, I've underdone that and we have 80.1, just to be clear. Uh, but we are waiting on the propellant GSC stuff, so I'll launch it once we can get that done. Now the fairings are a little bit tight around the solar panel. Pekka thought that uh, that was the problem causing the solar panel degradation during the live stream, but I, I don't see how that could be, but you know, who knows. Uh, it's all very weird. Anyway, so we will try this one and later on we'll do the bigger comm sets preferably with some other upgrades perhaps with the gamma 2 stage instead of the veronique stage okay so here we are and i thought about launching at night time just to give it a fighting chance but honestly if it's requiring a net positive energy balance i'm not too sure it's already check mark can generate solar power so i think it'll be all right now we need to get to an inclination above 35 degrees, so we're definitely not going out to 90. I'll change that, and then we're going to see whether we have enough delta V to do the rest. For now, SAS on, throttle is up, 
and ignition and launch. Rocket seems to be shuddering a lot. Mind you, we're not actually capable of checking our inclination right now, but I think 50 degree heading out from here should do just fine. Okay, booster set. Maybe I should go 45. I don't know, I don't know if it's got a check mark that while we're on our way. Oh, there we go. It's already there. All right. Well, in that case, we don't have to do 45. Well, fairings. I probably put too much solar panel on here, considering how vague the can generate solar power thing was. Well, maybe we can just do the 850 right now. Might not be efficient. Yeah, uh, yeah, probably shouldn't have done it that way, but all right. Okay, separation. I think we gotta test out the multiple ignition stuff. We're sort of in the middle of nowhere as far as comms. Oh, we have lost comms. Not quite orbit. Guess I can't shut off the RCS either, can I? Nope. Well, we'd have comms now. Maybe I should just leave the RCS going. It's not using those tanks. Okay, well, zero pitch, current heading. Okay, well that's all that. Separation. And ignition of this little new engine, which does kerosene and AK-20... AK-20. I'm just gonna send it up to the target apoapsis. And then once we get there, we'll get the 850 one way or another. We could reignite this or use the RCS to do that, potentially. Okay, that's a good apoapsis. So either we can reignite this or we can use the RCS. Let's see. I really need to test the solar panel though. We should do that after we get the target orbit. Let's see. A bad orientation for now. 0% wear. So, okay. Why... When I used the solar panels before, did they start out with high wear? But this one has 0% wear and is doing a nice job of recharging us. I mean, we're not pointing directly at the sun right now, but would do a nice job of recharging us as expected. It was never going to be able to maintain the charge for very long, mind you, because of the nighttime side. It can't make up for that. It wasn't sized for it. But, yeah. Those other ones had a lot of wear. This one does not. Very peculiar. All right. Well, let's sell the fuel down. And ignition. Okay. Checking for stable orbit. Okay. Well, we filled the contract, but let's see. Direction. Oh, uh, sun. Down. Which will point the solar panel at the sun. So yeah, we're recharging as expected. So there's the expected situation. Whatever the heck I was having before was the unexpected situation. So anyway, with that, we've uh, knocked out some things this time around and we know what we're doing. Uh, we are going to be trying to but we'll be unlocking the lunar communications and we'll see what we can do with that. And hopefully we'll do the lunar launches next time. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. 
and I'll see you next time.